So welcome to the Xbox Game Showcase Supercut Edition. A lot of people were upset with me. Oh, Dragon, you're being too harsh. The Game Showcase was excellent. It was fantastic. It was, oh my God. So hopefully you can tell me what you saw that I just missed because we're going to go through every game and I'm going to tell you what I was thinking whenever I saw this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Halo Infinite because this has been beat to death. But they started off the show with a great idea because I want to see in-depth gameplay especially from Sony and Microsoft whenever it's it's revealing the next generation hardware and I want them to explain to me and tell me what it is that is happening on screen that couldn't be done on old hardware but the problem is of course this world looks nothing like what they showed off with their first reveal of Halo Infinite and demoing the slip space engine. You know, granted that demo was just to show off the engine capabilities, but this world, aside from, you know, all the pop in and the poor lighting and lack of shadows and everything that Digital Foundry and others have pointed out, the world itself is just bare and lifeless. There's there's like no movement in the trees or grass, absolutely nothing coming across on the screen that screams that this is next generation. And I think Microsoft and fans kind of back themselves into a corner by focusing so much on power and graphics because that is all that you have heard for months. And then here is the biggest console exclusive game that you've got. Not only does it fail to impress, but it's become a meme. And there's footage showing games from 2013 that are more impressive looking and still open world. And, you know, you can say that it's an old build and that that honestly doesn't excuse the fact that it's been in development for five years and has a reportedly humongous budget and thousands of devs working on it. Like a few months isn't going to make that big of a difference. I mean, Sony is having to go through the COVID crisis as well, right? And And they were able to put up shows on their hardware running that looked pretty good. The point is... This is their first real impression, and ready or not, it failed to deliver. And on top of that, it wasn't even running on the Xbox Series X, but a PC that they say will be the equivalent to Xbox Series X. And in fact, the entire show, it's not clear that there was one game shown running on the Xbox Series X, which I think is a little bit troubling since the console is releasing in just a few months. And say what you will about the PS5 showcase, at least they showed all their games running on PS5 hardware. State of Decay 3 is up next. I can guarantee you it's not going to look like this. Uh, if you like State of Decay, which I do, I mean, that's something to look forward to, but who knows how long you're going to be waiting. There's no gameplay whatsoever. It says Series X and PC. Um, now, you're going to see that a lot during this show, and some people have suggested, you know, Microsoft said that there's not going to be Series X exclusives for at least two years, so if you see only Series X and PC, does that mean that these games are at least two years out? You know, who knows? Aaron Greenberg said, no, that's not the case. It just means that we're targeting those first. But, it, you know, a bunch of other games still said Xbox One. It's unclear. You know, Microsoft's messaging sometimes is as clear as mud. Phil Spencer shows up to talk about the power of Xbox Series X, talks about how great games are going to look on the new console. But, again, why aren't you showing the games then running on the Xbox Series X? You know, talking is one thing. Showing is another. Forza Motorsport, some great ray tracing shown off. No gameplay. Running at 30 frames per second. You know, devs have said that this is early pre-production. So again, you're not going to be playing it anytime soon. Everwild. I dig the art style. Again, no gameplay. You're going to hear me say that a lot. But we're learning that the reason we don't see gameplay for this game is because... The devs still don't even know what they're going to do with the gameplay. They say that they're still toying around with different ideas. So if they don't know how the game is supposed to be played, don't expect you to be playing it anytime soon. Next game up, tell me why. Can anybody tell me why there's still a problem with lip sync in so many games? I don't get it. But seems like this is an episodic interactive story game. I mean, that's just a guess because, again, we got no gameplay. 
Ori and the Will of the Wisp, which has been out a while, is getting 120 frames per second mode on Xbox Series X. That's nice. Then you had the Outer Wilds DLC announced. Now, I thought they said at the beginning of the show, you know, everything shown will be on Game Pass. But this trailer has a disclaimer saying that the base game is on Game Pass. So I guess technically, you know, they're not lying. But this DLC that, you know, they're showing you, uh, it seems that you have to buy that separately, which... I, again, technically, they're right, but seems a bit shady. The Grounded trailer I thought was funny. It had me chuckle a couple of different times during it, uh, but it was also kind of weird that they say that Cyberpunk is like the biggest game of the year, and not even they thought that Halo was going to be the biggest game of the year. That game comes out in just a few hours, so looking forward to that. I hope there's a lot of content there. You know, the very time demo, you know, it left me concerned, and uh, the game file size is very low, so... I'll probably, you know, be wanting more content, but who knows? We'll see. Maybe I'll be surprised. Obsidian's new RPG is in the works, Avowed. I mean, I'm glad that they're making a game like this. This is really cool. You know, everybody loves those Skyrim-type games. But, again, no gameplay, so who knows what to expect. And it's just so hard for me to get excited for pre-rendered cutscenes that tell me absolutely nothing. I mean, how many games have we seen great cutscenes for and then we see gameplay and we're like, uh, eh, uh, okay. Not to say that that's going to happen in this case. Obsidian's a great developer. They know how to make RPGs. But still, I want to see something with substance. As Dust Falls is the next game. It's like, uh... GTA loading screens the game. Uh, it's an interactive story, I, I guess, because again, no gameplay. So just got to take an educated guess on these things sometimes. Hellblade 2, guess what? No gameplay still. Digital Foundry says the original video that everybody likes to share off showing the power of Xbox Series X, that's only 24 frames per second. So we're going to have to actually see gameplay to understand how impressive this game is really going to be. Now, I believe it will be impressive. I mean, they're great developers. They're great designers. Um, the first game looked fantastic. But again, we're going to have to actually see something with substance before a lot of people are sold. Psychonauts 2, a multi-platform game, but at least, hey, they showed some gameplay. Uh, Destiny 2 Beyond Light was shown, another multi-platform game. But it is nice that it's going to be on Game Pass. And I, I think this whole, sh whole show was about selling you on Game Pass, which I totally get. That's Microsoft's big thing. They're more interested in you subscribing to their service than they are about you buying their console. But you've still got a console that you're still trying to market, that you're wanting people to sell. They may say that they don't care about people buying a console. Then if that was the case, they wouldn't be making it. They wouldn't be advertising it at every possible point. But show it. D don't be afraid that showing games running on Xbox Series X is somehow going to overshadow selling you on Game Pass. That's crazy. I, I still can't believe that the games weren't running on the new hardware. And then we entered a section of the, the show that talked about console launch exclusives, which indicates the games will likely launch on other consoles later. Stalker 2 started it off. A lot of people are excited for that. No gameplay. Warhammer Darktide, no gameplay. Uh, I'm curious if Microsoft paid for these console launch exclusives. I I'd like to know because it would really be interesting since Phil has talked about how he doesn't like launch exclusives and paying devs to keep their games off other platforms. Uh, that, of course, doesn't mean that it can't happen because it wouldn't be the first time that they've said one thing and did the other. Tetris Effect Connected. Hey, at least we got some Tetris gameplay because I'm sure a lot of people don't know how Tetris is played. Next up is The Gunk. This dev has come out to say that they went with Xbox because it had the most powerful console. That's nice. Um, they didn't want to have to limit their game, yet their game is also coming out on the base Xbox One, so they're still going to have to limit it. But, you know, whatever. Uh, I guess you suck up Gunk. The environment looks nice, though. The medium showed off how you explore two worlds at once, which is pretty cool, uh, but it's been confirmed to be 30 frames per second on Xbox Series X, which I think is pretty disappointing. In fact, 
I think it might be the only next-gen game that has definitively said that it's running at only 30 frames per second. Now, there's a lot of other games that, you know, there's rumor and there's speculation, but this one, the devs come out and said, yeah, it's running at 30 frames per second. Um, other sites are reporting that this game will come to PS5 eventually. Might take that with some salt until it's official, though. Trailer for Fantasy Star Online 2. Thought it was funny that they're calling it free to play, but only after you pay for Xbox Live Gold on multiplayer. Next up, Crossfire X. Again, advertised as free to play, but gold is required. And the trailer is for the single player game. And it's saying in the trailer that the single player isn't part of Xbox Game Pass, which is a little strange. But the game itself looks good. Uh, it's also confirmed that this was running on a PC and not Xbox Series X. And then the show ended with Fable, which I think pretty much everybody knew was coming, but again, no gameplay. So you know absolutely nothing about it. And that was the theme of the showcase. I mean, that that was the show. That was everything. It started off with unimpressive gameplay, and then the rest of the show is pretty much no gameplay. And then on top of that, the gameplay that was shown, that was impressive, that was it was running on PC. So this was like your big E3 showcase happening before the launch of your new console, and you've been bragging about nothing but power and the Xbox Series X, and then you didn't show up with it. It's just weird. So I know a lot of people disagreed with me. So post below, what was it about this show that excited you? Because the games lineup has been lackluster for a long time for Xbox. Everybody knows that. And everybody was kind of looking at this launch as a way that's going to fix that issue. But I didn't see much to convince me that the drought is anywhere near being taken care of. Sure, they announced a lot of big games, but those games for the most part, don't appear to be anywhere near release. So the waiting game continues. And the meme of wait till next E3 is now the meme of just wait till next show. It's coming. It's coming. It's got to be. So drop a like and share. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Are you listening? Damn.